In this episode of Visual Studio Toolbox, we're going to see what happens when someone has already changed code you're working on. How do you handle the conflict that occurs when you try to push your changes up to GitHub? Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green. This is episode four of our five-part mini-series on getting started with GitHub. In the past couple episodes, we saw that you can write code and push those changes up to GitHub. We did a simple, did simple coding in episode two, and then in episode three, we worked with a branch and used a pull request to merge that code into the master or main branch. And everything went smooth because there were no conflicts. But sometimes code I write might conflict with code somebody else wrote. How do we handle that? That's what we're gonna look at in this episode and the one after, in fact. So let's jump over to GitHub. And this is how we left the code uh, at the end of last episode. We created a math class. We put an add method in there with some very simple code. Now, someone is looking at this code, not me, someone else, looks at this code and says, hey, wait a minute. I thought we decided that we were going to use var whenever possible. So they make this change, and they commit it. And we changed int to var, and we commit this to the master branch. In all likelihood, they didn't create a separate branch just for those changes of code. That's the kind of thing you can just write directly into master. But this is what the code now looks like in the remote repository up in GitHub. OK, now I come into Visual Studio, and I'm also in master. And I'm looking at this code, and I'm thinking, oh, what was I thinking? Why don't I finish this code? X1 and X2 should be passed in as arguments, don't you think? Yeah, so do I. And then we don't need these two lines of code. And then you know what? What kind of calculator only deals with integers? Huh. So let's change this to double. And I don't need to create a variable sum just to return it. So I can just do this. And then I don't need that code. And then it occurs to me that all the way back in C sharp six, they introduced a feature where if all you're doing is returning something, then you can just write code that looks like this. Bam, and you can make this all single line of code. Now this is awesome. Okay, so now I'm going to, whoops, I meant to click here, go to get changes. Now I'm going to push this into master. So I'm going to say refactored add method. I'm going to commit all and push into master. I'm going to save it and push into master. And this is going to fail. And it's going to fail because somebody already changed the code here. And my code would overwrite this. And I don't necessarily just get to do that automatically. So. What can I do? Well, first thing is I want to see what the code is now and how that compares to the code I want it to be. So what I'm going to do is do a pull. I'm going to pull the remote version of master down to my local version of master. And that too will fail because I don't get to automatically overwrite my code with the code that's up there now. But what I do get from this is I get to see this is the code that I want to send up there. This is the code that is there. And now I can decide what to do about this. And I say, oh, well, yes, whoever made this change was correct, but I got a better idea. Let's just use my refactored goodness. So I'm going to open the merge editor. And I'm going to see this is the code that's up there now. This is what it used to be before they made the change that's currently up in GitHub. This is the code I want to use. So I have a choice. I can take the incoming, which is the code from the remote, and not use my code. I can take the current, which is my code. And in this case, I'm going to do that. I'm going to take the current. I'm going to accept the merge. And then I'm going to say, resolve conflict. Let's use my refactored version. And now what I'm going to do is commit and push this up into master. And because I've resolved the conflict, 
I do have the ability to do that push. And what that's going to do is update this code remotely. And now we've resolved the conflict. Now, maybe I go and talk to the developer who did that previously. Maybe I do it this way. Again, that's up to you to figure out how to do it. But what we've done now is resolve the conflict and I'm able to change the code. And I always like to go look at the branch history to see what happened. We see that there was a conflict. The code diverged, but I merged it and we use my refactored version. And again, if I double click on this, is it here? Yes, we double, this is the code that was committed. Oops, this is the change that I made originally. So we actually, interestingly, we have the full history here. If we just do this again, this is the change that was made on the server, changing into var. This is the change I made, getting rid of all of that and using internal double. And then this is when I resolved it. So two people working on the same code might run into an issue. That's how you resolve it. So if you're watching on YouTube, please give us a like, share with others, and come back for our next episode, which will be our wrap up to this mini series. We will continue looking at merge conflicts. We'll see you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox.